Hello, uh, we were talking about the Bad Breweries. That's a local company here in London that was we founded. And uh, uh, I have my group members, myself, Ali, and I have Tishana, Niralisha, uh, Dronak, and Ritan. So we'll be talking about all the process, the agenda we have to talk today, as the company overviews, the purchasing requirement, and the process that they're gonna use to manufacture it, and how we're gonna buy all this stuff. So I'll start with the company overviews. That's basically pretty old. That was founded in 1828, and uh, uh, that has a pretty good reputation. That's become really strong in 1878 when they won this pale ale in a gold medal in the international in France. So that's give a really outstanding image of the company. So talking about like a real expansion that came in 1950 when they acquired like a lot of breweries and they started manufacturing outside Canada and everything. Also, like in uh, 1955, a significant event happened when like uh, Ben 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 bought this uh, company, uh, if, uh, like acquired the whole lab thing, and that developed uh, like big brands like Krona, Budweiser, and all that's like really global brand. And uh, for requirement, we will talk about like uh, what kind of barley we need, like two kind of barley actually, we will be needing for the whole process, and. Uh, I'll talk more about like the requirement that we need in barley. That will be like uh, we need to have like 65 to 68 percent of a starch in barley that we will be using in our manufacturing process. Also, like we are trying to go below here, like 10 to 17 percent of protein, because that's ultimately you have to take out end of your process. So our main focus will be to get the 65 to 68 percent of starch. Also, like we we're focusing on the like uniform sizes and the color of the barley should be light yellow because that's how they create like foggy, uh, good, good, uh, good like color of the beer. Also, uh, uh, talking about the, uh, apart from this like technical requirement, like uh, talking about the amount, how much we're gonna need, we found out like 350 million bottles this sand like in a year. So based on that, and one bottle is like 60 ounce. So 60 ounce of beer contain one ounce of barley, and. That's how we calculated, like one ounce and 350 million, we converted into ton. So we came out this number, 9,922.33 tons. That's how much barley we need a year to buy. Now to talk about, let's talk about uh, the uh, uh, the other part, Niral Nira will take over. Thanks, Ali. So I'll be now presenting upon uh, what specific kind of barley does uh, Labak need. So barley is the most uh, important kind of grain they use for brewing process. Different kind of grains used are corn, wheat and rice. But um, barley helps to lend flavor, uh, color and mouthful to beer. So there are basically two, two kind of uh, uh, barley. One is two, two row barley and uh, another is six row barley. Six row barley has more uh, 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 enzymes to create sweetness and uh, two, row, two row barley uh, has uh, more of starch, less proteins, and thinner husk, which is, which is the, the which is the kind of uh, uh, barley which Labatt uses in its uh, uh, brewing process. Next, so uh, so uh, malted barley is produced uh, after a uh, rigorous malting process, and at the end of malting process, three kind of malts are produced, which is base malt, darker malts, and crystal malts. Base malt is the one which uh, Labatt uses for its brewing process. Uh, base malt is, uh, is the first kind of malt uh, which is uh, generated in the malting process and it has more of biscuity kind of flavor bread and, and also has uh, less sweetness which is best suited for the brewing process. So now I'll uh, call Ronak for further explanation. Thank you Nirali for passing it over to me. I'm going to explain you further about the process of how brewing is made and how the melted melted seeds are achieved. So these are the process, there are three process, that is steep, uh, germination and kilning. So proceed. So before going to that, I would like to, uh, I would like to tell you guys that these are the main ingredients that are required by law in order to make the, make the ingredients in proper use. So first is the melted barley hopes, yeast and water. So our main focus would be on melted barley but I would like to explain why these all ingredients are required in our process. Next. So as melted barley gives us the sugary taste in, in our process, uh, it gives ethanol which is very very important for our process. It also gives us amino acid which, which enhances the taste and the betterness of the product. 
Also, the holes are added for the components. It gives the sugary taste. It reduces a little bit of sugary taste, but gives flavor to the to the product. Yeast, because we use the better melted barley, the yeast would be able to able to mix well, very well with the product. And the water is required to make sure that yeast processes the carbohydrates, which is very much required again in the process. Next, so the process of germination and killing, I would like to explain as. Like the normal, the normal grains are uh, are, uh, are are exhaust, like are kept in a train. Then they are they are puffed with the uh, humidation, and also the and also it is processed with the hot air. So the amount of hot air uh, we keep for the uh, during the process increases the uh, increases or changes the color of the product. So the longer time we keep, the different shades we get. A more requirement is the base belly, which requires around like two days of uh, the process and the further would be explained by uh, Keaton. Thank you Ronik. Now I want to explain about the selection of suppliers. So we set, uh, selected uh, two suppliers based on the three factors that is uh, supplier quality, cost and the delivery performance. When I, uh, when I can say about the barn or mart, they are the local suppliers and we want to spend our uh, business in local so that the local business is going to grow and it is easy for us to communicate with them. And not only that, they work together with us to produce the specific uh, uh, brew of like what we desire. And when it comes to the car deal, they have, the, uh, they have learned the business for past 150 years and uh, uh, they have established uh, in uh, 70 uh, other countries. Not only that, when it comes to the uh, globalization, they are well, uh, they, their network is well built and uh, they also produce a very good, uh, they also give the very good competitive price for their customers. Not only that, they produce uh, uh, over 200 uh, million tons per year and they have the uh, 18 operation uh, units in 10 different countries. So when I go for the next uh, slide, I can say the uh, the production uh, product package. So malt is we are ordering in a bulk quantity, and it uh, consists of like each bag of each uh, gunny bags of 25 kgs, and like they are very flexible with us. Like they're gonna give us the grinds uh, sorted by the size. So this is the reason why we selected these two suppliers, and we are looking forward for this. So. I'm gonna hand it over to Tashana. Thank you. Three. Thank you, Ren. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at the factors affecting um, availability and prices. So um, these factors are weather, global production, US dollar exchange rates, health news, emerging market demand, and subsisting one effect. Okay, so we all know that um, weather play a detrimental part in any crop. So if the weather is too hot or cold, it can affect the quality of the final product. Uh, for global pr uh, production, it's just the overall production. Too much or too less affects the demand and supply. For US dollar and exchange rate, this is based, all uh, barley is sold in US dollars. So if the US dollar is too high, it can affect the price, If, especially in other countries where their currency is low. Uh, health news, media play a tremendous role in um, barley. So if the media portrays barley as a, a good, um, thing, the demand will increase. If not, it will decrease. Emerging markets. So if there are too much people, too much countries producing barley at once, this can also affect demand and supply and the prices. And substitutional effect, basically this is just the overall production of barley and whether or not customers want it or don't use it at all. Um, pricing trends. So this is uh, basically shows a uh, one year from March 2017 to March 2018. Um, I used a uh, one year um, pricing trend chart from um, Canada. So for the first five months, you can see here that the pricing trend is consistent at a low. And uh, for the following months of October to March, you see an increase in prices up to all the way to $136 per US. And it's measured in um, per metric ton. That's how they measure it. So this is the reason why um, these months have increased. Because during these months, it's the cold winter months. So therefore, the prices increase. Okay, so that sums the end of our presentation.
Um, thank you very much.